Hey everybody, this is Glenn Campbell and this uh, algebra lesson is on integers, rational numbers, and absolute values. Uh, so here's some definitions. Whole numbers, you guys. Whole numbers are, uh, they start with 0 and then 1, 2. They're just counting numbers starting at 0. Integers are all the whole numbers plus all the negative whole numbers. So, uh, you know, all the way to negative infinity. So all the whole numbers plus all the negative whole numbers. And then rational numbers, you guys, it equals the whole numbers, it equals the integers, and it's any fraction, or and it has to be a repeating or a terminating decimal. Um, if it's a number like pi that doesn't repeat or never ends, you guys know what pi is, 3.14, and then it keeps going 15927, it keeps, never repeats. Those are not called rational numbers, those are called irrational numbers, and that's when you get into algebra 2. Okay, or maybe later into Algebra 1 also, but uh, rational numbers has to be a repeating decimal like uh, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, or a terminating decimal like 0.25. It just it, it stops. It doesn't keep going. Okay, or any number up above here. Um, 0 is a rational number. 3 is a rational number. All of these are rational numbers also. All right, so for example, you guys, so state yes or no if the number is rational. Okay, negative 2 thirds. Okay. Um, well, that f qualifies as a fraction. Negative two-thirds is a fraction, so yes, it's a rational number, okay? Uh, how about um, negative 0.48, okay? Negative 0.48 with a bar on top of it means the 48, 48, 48 goes on forever and ever and ever. So that repeats, you guys. So a repeating decimal uh, means, yes, that's also a rational number. Okay, how about the square root of negative, well, the negative, the square root of 32, all right, now that is called an irrational number um, uh, because that's going to be like a, a five point something something, and it keeps going on. And your if you punch the square root of 32 in your calculator, actually it's negative five point something something. That is uh, no, that's not a rational number, okay? But if you had the square negative square root of 36, that's just plain old negative six, and negative six is a, a integer, which is a rational number. So yes, okay. How about this one? Point one zero one one zero. 1110 and it keeps following that pattern. Okay, that one's kind of tricky, you guys. It's not repeating. I mean, there is a pattern right there, but it's not a repeating. It doesn't repeat, you know, it doesn't go 0 .101010 or 1101010110. This one keeps it stretching out the one, so it's not repeating. So this one's no, it's not rational. Okay, because it does not repeat. All right, so graph each number on a number line and then tell the number uh, which number is greater. Okay, so here we are. We have negative 1, 2, negative 3, and negative 3 fifths. All right, I didn't do these in order. I wished I did, you guys. So negative 1 is going to be right there. Okay, so and then uh, positive 2 is going to be right there. Negative 3 is going to be right there. And then negative 3 fifths is not quite negative 1. It's going to be like right about there. So when I graph all of those guys, there they are right there. Okay, so, uh, and then once you have them graphed, this is the order. This is the smallest number. This is the next smallest number. This is the next smallest number. This one's the biggest number. Negative 3 fifths is bigger than negative 1. Negative 1 is bigger than negative 3. When they're on the number line, that tells you which one's bigger right there. So there's the order right there. Okay, uh, how about this one? Negative 3.99 is going to go right next to negative 4. 10 thirds is the same. 3 goes into 10 3 times uh, with 1 left over. This is the same as 3 and 1 third. So there's 3 right there. So 3 and 1 third. There would be about 10 thirds right about there. 5 is going to be way over here. And then negative 1 half is going to be right there. So when I graph all those guys, that will tell me uh, which one is the smallest, which one is the next smallest, and the next smallest, and finally the biggest. And there you go. Okay, pretty easy, right? Okay, absolute values, you guys. I'm not going to give you the formal definition of absolute values. Just absolute values. I had a, a student teacher one time. She called them negative choppers because uh, they take off the negatives. If there's a negative inside the absolute value, it's, it's always, it always comes out positive, always, always. So, for example, the absolute value, and this is how you say absolute value with these bars right here, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. The absolute value of positive 3 is also positive 3. The absolute value of 0, 0. The absolute value of negative 1 half is positive 1 half. It's always the positive number that's inside of um, uh, the absolute value sign. All right. Okay, there we go. That's it, you guys. Good job.